Back at it again. Welcome back to Headlight Headlines, your daily automotive news podcast. I'm your host, Clayton, and we've got a bunch of different things to cover today. Before we get started, make sure to check us out on Twitter at HLightHLines, on Instagram and TikTok at Headlight Headlines. I said it wrong yesterday, so I made sure I said it right today. So check us out on social media. And with that being said, let's get right into the news. Starting things off with an interesting story from Dodge. Um, And the title here is that Dodge will completely control the performance upgrades on its EV. EVs, all of them. But mainly ones we're talking about here are pictured here. The new EV Charger that they're coming out with here soon. The Charger Daytona SRT concept. So, like many of us know, when we really like cars, um, we will upgrade them, different things about them, but this article is focused mainly on powertrain upgrades to the vehicles, to their EVs in the future. So, because electric car tuning is different than a combustion engine tuning, Dodge kind of wants to control that for their customers to make sure that it's done right. Which makes sense to me. It That's something they would want to regulate because they want to make sure that the cars can handle it and that it's safe because that's their top priority for the customers. It's kind of interesting how they're doing this. I hadn't really thought of this yet, to be honest. Uh, we've got this chart here. It might be a little blurry for you to see. Here we got it blown up a little bit. So this is the different trim levels of that Daytona SRT Charger Daytona concept. So there's some different trims that they're releasing for it. There's three different trims shown here. The 340 is the name of this one. It's the base trim. It has 455 horsepower. 440 is the next trim. It doesn't say how much that base model is. Um, And then SRT obviously is the high performance version of that so they're coming out with two different stage tunes dc stage tunes for each trim level so if you have the base 340 trim there are two different trim pack or dc stage one and dc stage two performance upgrades that you can get for it and these are over the air purchases You download and install the software, register to the vehicle, then, and then you install the DC crystal key is what they're calling the hardware, and that unlocks the power for you. And then you can get new fender badges and whatever. Oh, well. So you can see here how the naming scheme is kind of increasing. It is odd to me that these new the numerals they're using does not correlate to the horsepower number which is fine it's not that big of a deal just interesting i kind of want to know what exactly the 340 and 440 stand for because that wasn't really talked about um so i believe it said here that the stage two on the base model brings it up to 535 horsepower from 455 so increase of 80 or so horsepower there which is pretty, that's pretty good. This one, it says here, the 440 model plus the stage two tune gets it to 670. It doesn't say what the base one is. It says the graph isn't to scale, but I'm assuming the 440 is more than that. So let's say standard, it comes with like 550 because it's above that 400, which said it was 535. So that means if the SRT... The SRT with the Stage 2 is going to be something crazy. I don't know how much horsepower it's supposed to have. But if it's if these are already adding close to 100 horsepower, that's going to be wild. Because if this comes with, like let's say, 800 horsepower, apparently, then that'll be like 900 horsepower with a Stage 2 tune, which is insane. It might be a little less or something, but still, that's wild. It's interesting to see, interesting to think about. 
because eventually, like, if automakers don't do this, then someone else will, basically. They're going to unlock the engine using coding and whatever it is to get the most performance they can out of it. So, it's cool to see Dodge already giving out information like this. I like it. I like the model. I'm interested interested to see how much these tunes cost for the different stages. And I wonder if you have to like get the stage 1 and the stage 2 to unlock the stage 2 like potential like if you have to get this before you can upgrade to the stage 2. I don't know. I'm sure we'll find out. But very cool from Dodge. Next we have something I completely did not expect at all today when I was looking at articles to cover. The Mazda rotary engine is coming back. Very interesting. I did not expect this one bit. We haven't had a rotary engine since the RX-8, which was around in 2010's era. It was when it was last around. And they're bringing it back on a plug-in hybrid. So this is an, an interesting concept. Um, it's been done many times with like a range extender version. We just talked about one yesterday, range extender. Um, and they're going to boost the mileage by adding this rotary engine to act as a range extender for them. So they say it's going to be revealed this Friday, which is exciting. They've got this rotary logo here. You can see it's in the shape. And it has an E cut out for EV. Yeah, cool. <laughs> kind of goofy. Oh, well. Um, but this, they're putting it on the MX-30. It had really bad range, like 100 miles of range was it. Which sucks. Based on competition. And so they want to bring that up. Which, yeah. It's a reasonable option. I do remember this car. It has the weird... This car's... <laughs> it's got the rear hinge doors right here. It's basically an RX-8, just an SUV. Now, they're putting a rotary in it. It just has an uh, electric motor in it, too. It's funny. We'll have more about this on Friday when it comes out, because this doesn't really say much, besides that they're bringing it back. But I think it's pretty cool. Cool to see rotaries. I like rotaries, obviously. They're unreliable, but they're cool. Next up, we have a really interesting uh, concept here from Snapdragon, Qualcomm is their company. Um, and this they're calling it the digital chassis architecture. And I think it's pretty cool. Um, so Snapdragon, they make chips and software and tons of stuff for phones, computers, stuff like that. That's where I know them most from is phone technology background stuff. Um, so they have this car that they had on display at CES, which is going on this week. And they had had a like a little thing about it last year. We kind of had this yesterday happen with what we were talking about with the BMW. Where last year we saw a very simplified version or um, just a concept. And now we see something actually in person that shows it. So they brought this car here to show off their software that they've developed for vehicles to use for the market. Um, they're saying it's a system on chip solution and it brings this software they made called Arriver to do all this for advanced driver assist, basically. And it's pretty cool. It has a lot of stuff. So this car, I remember seeing this because it had these wacky seats and these mirrors inside the car um so they use a lot of camera systems for this vehicle and they have a big display which i'll show you here in a minute you can see here it's got the side view mirrors inside the car which is really cool they're saying it's got a lot of speakers which is, yeah that's cool i guess um but here you can see the screen the screen goes all the way around the dashboard you can see it's got a camera here on the passenger side. Presumably it's got one over there. I can't really see it. And here we go. This is what I wanted to look at. It has so It's such a big screen that it's like, how do you even have enough information 
to put on there. You can see here it shows the weather on the passenger side, which, yeah, that's cool. But, like, obviously the passenger can do whatever they want on the screen. It's just funny. We're going to see these more. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> We're going to see these come up more here in the future with these long screens stretching the whole length of the inside of the vehicle. You can see here, like we talked about yesterday, Tesla getting rid of the yoke. They're bringing back the yoke. Some interesting little paddle things here. I'm assuming it's your turn signal, wiper stock stuff. Very cool. The software, you can see, so it's not actually a full screen thing. You can see the bezels kind of like here. It cuts it pretty low, which kind of stinks, but they'll make upgrades to it. Got a speedometer here. I'm assuming some driver control stuff over here. Overview of the vehicle, little note screen there, date, clock, weather, and then obviously this passenger display, which looks pretty long. It looks way longer than the other ones. Right there, showing the weather. You can see here we've got park, reverse, hazard lights, neutral, and drive, which is interesting. That might be kind of a far reach for drive. I don't know. I can't really tell based on these proportions. And then you can see in the back here, cameras in the seats and a screen. Pretty cool. I love technology like this, seeing it. Um, the roof, it has this like, it's hard to describe. There's some cars that have these, I forget what it is, the Hummer EV or something. And it's called like the jungle something. It's kind of like that, where it's just over your head. <coughs> Sorry about that. But it's really cool to see this vehicle that they made, this software they made. And I'm interested to see if they will sell this software to companies, if they will make their own vehicle, if they will partner with someone. It's a, it'll be interesting to see in the future. Next up, we have an article that talks about heat pumps and their role in EVs, which is pretty... I'm a nerd and I like engineering things. And, I mean heat pumps it makes sense why this would work and i'll be interested to see if this becomes like a standardized thing eventually so they're saying heat pumps can be three or four times more efficient at heating the cabin which ev heat use drains the battery like pretty decently not like incredibly but a decent amount um especially when it gets below freezing like, EVs struggle below freezing. Um, so much range is lost. And being able to use these heat pumps may be something to help get that energy back so that it's not wasted on stuff like heating. Not that it's wasted, but so that you can get more miles out of your car before needing to charge again. They just go into statistics about a lot of stuff. Um... Uh, but I just wanted to note that I'm interested to see what comes of this. If if heat pumps really, if that's the main solution, it can be, and that's okay. I just want to see, like we saw all that crazy stuff Snapdragon just came up with. So maybe somebody can come up with a pretty unique or different uh, innovative solution to fix this problem. And next up, we got a pretty fun article here. We got... 17 cars here so we're going to go through them quick that need a redesign soon because we've had the same model forever and we want something new first of the honda odyssey this honda odyssey has been along around for so long it got a light refresh but this generation was released in 2018 this picture is not the new one i don't think it might be i don't know whatever 2018 it's been five years now come on Let's see. Audi A4. I kind of disagree. Maybe, yeah. Just because this car, you say you can trace it back to 2016. It looks so new. But they could probably go crazy with it. So, yeah. Why not? BMW. Every BMW they're saying. <laughs> People just hating on it. On the grills. I like them. Get over it. They're cool. Forerunner, yeah, we've had this forever. 
people like it because of that and it kind of fits its niche market but the sales are starting to decline for this new forerunner so i think they need to and the tacoma better be on here too every jaguar yeah jaguar doesn't really have much market prevalence right now and yeah <laughs> look they're already talking about the tacoma but no jaguar i agree f pace very cool all Teslas, yeah, they're all the same. They've been the same the whole time. Subaru, they all look the same, basically, is what they're saying. It's true. They do. Q50, yeah, it's been around since 2013. That's what I was going to say. Ten years now. Come on, give us a new car. I love the Q50, kind of. And that's kind of contradictory. But that's how I feel. Chevy Silverado... They're just saying pickup trucks in general. That they... Yes and no. There will be some that look different. Obviously the EVs look different. And... A lot of people won't buy trucks if they don't look how they are now. Love the Silverado Z02 though. Very nice. Too expensive. GTR. Yeah, we've had the same one since 2009. Pretty much. The new one looks newer. But it still looks the same. Chevy Express, eh, there's not really a need to. It literally is the exact same. Like, it is the same. But they're saying EV stuff. The Mustang, people just don't like it yet. It's just because it just came out. Just wait till it comes out. Mitsubishi Outlander Sport, huh? Yeah, like it does look kind of older. It's a Mitsubishi, Mitsubishi though, and it has its own uniqueness to it. So yes, I do think it should be updated, but I I do like it. Camry, yeah, yeah, so many of them. XT4. Uh, I don't know. I don't think there's anything wrong with the XT4, to be honest. I disagree on that one. And that's it. Yeah, they're stretching on the last one. But that's all I've got for you today. Be sure to check us out on our socials, like I said before. And with that being said, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.